Hello and welcome to your first video of Gen Chem 2. In this video, we're just going to look over the different states of matter there are using water as our model system. And here we have a table from your book that shows us our three states of water, gas, liquid, and solid. And we have some properties for those. And so we're, we're going to go over these properties and look at some trends. First is density. Um, and we can just see if we look at the density of ice and liquid, these densities are much higher than the density of steam. That is, ice and liquid are more compact than steam is. And if we look at just liquid water and solid ice, we see not only are the densities close, but the molar volume is close. That is the space taken up by uh, one mole of atoms. And we also notice that the density of liquid water is actually bigger than the density of ice, which is not how most things behave, but it's an important property for water so that our lakes don't freeze over. Now let's look at some other properties of these three states of water. So density, we covered shape. Both gas and liquid don't have a defined shape while a solid does. Gas does not have a defined volume while liquid and solid does. And all of these relate to what are called intermolecular forces or the forces between molecules. So weak intermolecular forces lead to this low density indefinite shape and volume while strong molecular forces lead to this high density indefinite shape and volume. Now let's just take a deeper look at our types of matter. So liquids are molecules are close together and so you can't compress a liquid because there's no space between the molecules. How, how, however, for liquids, the molecules are not stuck in place. Um, they can move around each other. And this allows liquid to have no definite shape. It will fill whatever shape it is put in. But they cannot expand or escape their container because they're too uh, close together. Uh, compare that with gases. Gases, the uh, molecules are very far apart from each other. And so you can compress a gas because there's a lot of space between the atoms, right? Um, gases are highly mobile, so they can escape the container. And they will also completely uh, take up the space whatever container they're in. Um, so that is why when we talk about molar volumes, that is the volume of one mole of gas versus the volume of one mole of liquid, Gases have a much, much, much bigger molar volume because they're not actually stuck together, so they are they are free to expand to whatever volume they need to. And lastly, we have solids, and we have two types of solids, crystalline and amorphous. So crystalline solids, um, they have a, a defined shape. Think of your salt crystals. While amorphous solids do not have a defined shape. Think of your plastics and gas. And so solids are really close together and the atoms can't really move. Now, the atoms aren't frozen. The atoms can still vibrate, but they are not free to move around each other like a liquid. Um, therefore, solids cannot compress and they already have a set volume and shape. Solids do not take whatever shape they are put into, right? And like I said, um, we have different types of solid, crystalline and amorphous. So your crystalline solids are ordered um, in some kind of pattern, so salt and diamonds, while amorphous solids don't have any pattern, so plastic and glass. Now, with these phases, our molecules can change between solid, liquid, and gas quite easily uh, under certain conditions. And changing between these states is what we call a phase change. And it really has to do with the amount of kinetic energy these atoms, molecules have. And just remember, kinetic energy is the energy of movement, right? So for solids, they will melt as you add more energy or more kinetic energy. Liquids 
will boil into a gas when given more kinetic energy because more kinetic energy they have on the more movement they will have and so you'll break from that solid you'll break from that liquid with more movement um, you can also do this not only with pressure but also uh, or sorry not only heat but also pressure um, because one of the big things between a, a solid liquid and gas is how far apart the atoms are. So the higher pressure, you move these atoms closer together, right? So gases, um, you can condense them by either decreasing the pressure or decreasing the temperature or increasing the pressure. That's basically how a gas tank works. So the gas molecules in here, butane, under high pressure, and so they are liquid inside the tank. You open up the valve, you release that pressure, and so the gas, sort of the molecules escape as a gas. Um, and here we can just uh, show a picture of this solid. You heat it up, liquid. Liquid, you can heat or reduce the pressure, become a gas. Gas, you can cool, increase the pressure, force molecules to come together, be a liquid, and then cool it even more to be a solid. And that's it for our first video. See you in the next video.